Great. All right, without further ado, I will start the state of the city for the city of Summersworth, New Hampshire. So thank you everybody for being here. Quite excited to present uh, not only the good work that we are already doing here in the city, but some of the plans and ideas of uh, what uh, potential projects and uh, work we could do over the next year. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna jump right in. Uh, first up, I wanna talk about housing. This has been a uh, top priority for me uh, throughout you know, uh, my short turn and, and tenure as mayor, um, but it's something that we as a community know well uh, uh, we know that there is a large housing gap, not only in Summersworth, but throughout the state of New Hampshire, but also the country. And um, we have actually already implemented a number of things to hopefully close this housing gap. Um, recently, we had a uh, housing chapter submitted to the planning board, which is quite exciting. And in that, they identified that Summersworth uh, needs to build 738, or excuse me, 48 new housing units by the year 2040. Um, that's a large number, but I have to say we are very close uh, to getting to halfway on this already. Um, I've listed here a few projects that are currently in the works or being planned. Uh, we've got a project on Elm Street that uh, is planning around 152 units. Um, that's what their uh, proposal was submitted at. We have a new uh, pr project proposal coming to the planning board uh, for conceptual design soon, that's 140 apartments at a uh, current uh, mill site owned by Chimberg. Uh, the National Guard Armory project is gonna be uh, hopefully breaking ground within this year and we'll have 24 condos uh, being developed. We also have new development on High Street that has started. They've started to kind of cut out the street that will go to these units. It's uh, 19 duplex, or excuse me, nine duplexes, which will be a total of 18 new units. And then the uh, old Summersworth uh, police station in our downtown is uh, approved for six apartments in the upstairs of that. So if you do the math out, uh, you come up with about 340 new units that we have already are already able to account for, which again is nearly halfway to this um, 748. So again, we've got how many more years till 2040 and we're already nearly halfway. I feel like we are really doing a great job uh, tackling this uh, housing crisis. Uh, if you look up there, there's a variety of different types of housing. We've got apartments, we've got homes, we've got duplexes, condos. Um, Certainly, I'm excited to see some more affordable housing in this community. I think that uh, creating some transitional housing would be key to helping our homelessness crisis. Um, but I think what we're doing right now is working. Um, and so quite, quite excited to see this. I mentioned our master plan. Uh, there's a housing chapter coming to the planning board. They uh, recently received it. Uh, it was developed by Stratford Regional Planning Commission, worked very hard on that, took tons of input from the community to develop it. And hopefully, we will see that uh, uh, be finalized by the planning board soon. But also, uh, SRPC is submitting a number of potential zoning changes that uh, could help incentivize further housing in our community. We also have a housing task force uh, chaired by myself, put together by a number of different community stakeholders uh, that have been discussing potential zoning changes. So just to list a few of these potential ideas we might see within the next year, we've got um, the potential for updating our ADA accessibility, or excuse me, um, our uh, accessory dwelling unit uh, ordinance to uh, allow for it a little bit uh, more ease of use for that. Uh, potentially just simplifying our zoning across the board, uh, allowing uh, more duplexes throughout the city as well as more multifamily units, and then hopefully beginning to start focusing on looking at different neighborhoods within the community and figuring out ways to define the characters of those neighborhoods to create housing to benefit those neighborhoods. So yeah, tons of great work. Um, I also want to talk about infrastructure and public works. This has been a hot uh, issue for us on the City Council for a number of years. We've really focused on roads and sidewalks. Uh, at least um, when I was as a City Councilor, this was something we talked often about. We we're going into a new budget where we will I'm certainly talk about this as well. Um, but some great things that are currently planned, we've got the Complete Streets project on Constitutional Way. Uh, that will hopefully tonight get some initial approval with a bond. Um, again, we are voting on that later this evening. Um, but we also have some other uh, road investments that uh, we've put, um, we've already put our money towards. Uh, this year we're planning to uh, improve West High Street, Pleasant Street, Fremont Street, Silver Street, and Parkview Terrace. Um, 
And again, over the past few years, we've done a number of improvements that have really started to chip away at some of the roads that really needed uh, some repairs. Uh, we also have some big high, um, sidewalk improvements coming up where we're going to work on High Street, West High Street, as well as Maple Street uh, to uh, at least the Maple Street section is going to be a brand new sidewalk that kind of connects a missing chunk on that street to allow for more walkability for our, our uh, students who go to Maplewood School. Um, but other projects include, uh, we've done a number of water main replacements on, or we're planning, excuse me, to do some water main replacements on Main Street, as long as the state gets out of our way on that one. We don't want to talk about that right now, but <laughs> hoping that we can convince the state of New Hampshire to allow us to do this, because it's desperately needed, but we are pl in the planning stages of this. Um, we also have phase two improvements to our wastewater treatment plant. Um, we are completing our water meter replacement program. We've already replaced all the residential uh, water meters in the city, so that's about, I believe, 2,500 uh, meters. Uh, still to do our commercial uh, water meters, but by the end of this, it will be over 3,000 water meters replaced throughout the entire city, which is great. Updating them, making them newer, and uh, better able to communicate with um, our uh, wastewater and um, water treatment plant. Um, we're also uh, planning some replacements to the Noble Pines Water Tower. That's uh, starting to kind of uh, come down the pipeline. I think we'll see some stuff related to this uh, pretty soon. And last but not least, uh, we have a new mechanic position that's proposed in this year's budget for Public Works to help uh, work on some of the trucks and uh, equipment at Public Works. So great stuff. Parks and Recs. Uh, one project that's been near and dear to my own heart is the Ash Street Pollinator uh, Garden. We are going to hopefully complete that this year with some planting. We've already done the hardscaping. Now we just have the landscaping left to finalize this. So hopefully that will be um, growing and get a bunch of uh, butterflies and bees this summer. And folks can go sit in there and enjoy the, the flowers and the, you know, the smells that will come from it. Um, we also have some planned improvements for Jules Bisson Park, uh, including updates to the basketball court, uh, restoring the infield, uh, building some ADA, so some accessible bleachers, which I think is great, as well as reconstruction of the dugout. Um, Conservation Commission has been working to um, put Mally Farm into con conservation, so hopefully this year we will see a plan from them where we that we can approve. Uh, and then from that point forward, actually be able to do some much needed trail improvements throughout Mallee Farm along the river. We're also uh, in the planning stages uh, of the Summersworth Library improvements. This was a plan that came forward to us a year, a year or two ago and hoping that over the next few years we can start uh, implementing some of the uh, things that were, or recommendations that were provided to us, including improvements to accessibility, creating an elevator uh, that can be allow folks to go between the different floors more easily, uh, increasing the number of books that we have in the library, uh, going from about uh, 5,500 square feet of uh, shelf space to 7,200 square feet, which would be a huge improvement, uh, as well as relocating the children's room. So uh, again, those plans are in the very beginning stages, but quite exciting and definitely worth mentioning as I think our library has seen some amazing programming, a lot of use, and is much deserved. So for economic development, some really exciting news is that we got 16 new businesses in the city this year. I think that's awesome, this past year, I should say. There are many more planned to come here. I think as we do a number of the things I've already mentioned that we're doing, we are going to see this number increase. We've got road improvements. We've got people living here. People are going to want to have their businesses in Summersworth, and I uh, I am quite excited. Of some of these businesses, we've got uh, Pops Up, which moved from Dover to us. Uh, it's a pretty much uh, a nationwide business that sells popcorn. They're phenomenal. We got to tour them earlier this, I believe it was in December maybe. Um, and their facility is uh, state of the art. It is quite impressive. Also got uh, a bunch of new restaurants downtown, including Folded that you see here. And then uh, quite exciting, we have a new sports dome that hopefully will be finished within this year or next year uh, that will bring a uh, number of families to this community from around the region, uh, hopefully starting to see uh, the amazing work that we're doing in Summersworth. Um, other exciting news, we, as I mentioned earlier, we have the sale and redevelopment of the former Summersworth Police Station. That was a project that had sat in our downtown for years, and we are quite excited, I know I am, I'm sure the council is too, that that is now off of our, you know, out of our hands, if you will, and now going to be redeveloped, hopefully with uh, some businesses in the bottom and apartments above. 
Um, another really exciting thing that we'll actually talk about tonight at our meeting is the use of an electronic and online permitting system. Uh, again, this will use federal money, so again, money that we were granted uh, due to COVID relief, uh, to actually purchase the SmartGov software, which will allow for a streamlining of all of our city services, improve accessibility from the public to um, our planning office, uh, improve management of all the applications that we receive, hopefully increase uh, the efficiency of our permitting, and um, as well as transparency. So really, really, um, really important uh, program that we've been planning for years, but now actually have the ability to implement, so quite uh, ready for that. And last but not least, I know this might not seem like economic development, but we do have a reassessment coming uh, this year. It's already begun, and I think that that will uh, show uh, not only property owners, but um, folks who are looking to uh, have uh, businesses here in the city, that Summersworth it has not only really uh, amazing properties that folks could uh, utilize, but also I'm hoping, you know, fingers crossed, that w through the reassessment we'll see the ability to have access to more funding with lower property taxes when we do our budget this time next year. The lower property taxes are always good for the economy. All right, arts and cultures. This is something that also kind of is near and dear to my heart. The first thing on the list, I'm excited that I, tonight I'll actually get to announce the winners of the Mayor's Quarterly Art Contest, so I will withhold revealing who that is yet, but we will have those um, announced tonight with the first piece of art in the Mayor's office starting on April 1st. Um, really uh, quite excited about the pieces that were selected. Can't wait to announce them. We also have some new murals that are being planned. We have one for the entrance of our, in our downtown, as well as potential other murals planned throughout the city to kind of add some brightness and color. Uh, there are some grant opportunities that were discussed recently at the Mayor's Commission on Cultural Ethnicity and the Arts, uh, and are hoping to build some partnerships with our schools, SYC, and students to actually uh, utilize these grants and get a little bit more art created throughout the community. Another great one that I've heard discussed at the committee level are some oral histories of our residents and our communities. I'm quite excited to see uh, this come to fruition. Uh, I think learning about the community, learning from folks, learning about um, the history of the various buildings and the various neighborhoods uh, can really go a long way to learning about our future. So quite excited to see this uh, take place. And lastly, a few uh, important things. We've got some new street signs in our downtown. So the Historic District uh, Commission had worked together to propose some new street signs. Now we have these beautiful um, like historic street signs that are modeled after the original wooden street signs uh, that they had throughout uh, the hilltop area back years and years ago. Um, but we also have historic markers. We got two new state historic markers. Uh, one you can see there in the picture at Forest Glade Cemetery, the other is up at Hilltop School. But we also started a program um, to have local historic markers with our first one that has actually arrived, which you can see there, it's kind of still in the box, but hopefully it's up soon, uh, we'll go at Citizens Place. So um, other options or other locations that we'll be seeing these uh, local historic markers will be at 45 Market Street, uh, the Summersworth Historical Museum, uh, Citizens Place is that one there. Uh, Central Park, uh, Great Falls Manufacturing Building, so down by the mills. Uh, City Hall, we will have one. Uh, Noble Pines and at the GE Building. Uh, and these will all mark a variety of interesting locations and histories throughout the city. Uh, and quite excited for these to uh, start get, getting uh, put up. And last but not least, I know it seems a little far away, but I've already started some discussions with folks about celebrating our 300th anniversary in 2029. 20, uh, That's the anniversary of us becoming a parish. Um, again, I think you know five years seems like a long ways, but I think uh, to actually plan out and get these uh, plans in place to have a really successful anniversary celebration, I think five years is probably just about uh, the right amount of time. So hoping to announce some uh, exciting things related to this in the next few months uh, within this year. All right, public safety. Uh, we've done some great investments in our public safety departments, both police and fire. Uh, most uh, notably, we've completed uh, just this past year the new fire station. Uh, hopefully everyone's had a chance to go check it out. It is state of the art. Uh, it is um, amazing, it's beautiful, and most importantly, it has some very important um, design uh, kind of uh, 
setups, if you will, to ensure that our uh, fire department and staff at the fire station will remain safe. Um, it really is a big concern of not only us here in Summersworth, but folks throughout the uh, state uh, that firefighters are exposed to a number of toxic chemicals. So creating a fire station that uh, lives up to ensuring that they remain safe and healthy is quite important. And I'm really excited that we were able to do that in this new fire station. Um, we also have increased our community policing efforts. Um, we've also done a number of purchases, including 31 body-worn cameras for our police department. Uh, this year, we're budgeting for 11 self-contained breathing apparatuses for the fire department. We're also planning to hire a new fire chief, uh, a deputy fire chief, as well as a new uh, part-time police officer, as is proposed in the city budget for this year. On top of that, we are replacing the air conditioning at the police station, and we also are proposing a new uh, police vehicle purchase, including a new cruiser and a new unmarked uh, vehicle for the city to use. Um, for sustainability, again, I think Summersworth has led the way in a lot of different ways in terms of sustainability. It's been a main focus of the city for a number of years before even I was here. I'm excited to continue that. Um, this project, the solar project that we've heard a lot about is hopefully this, I believe June is when it is, will start to be uh, put in place. Uh, so we will hopefully have solar uh, power in the city uh, by the end of this year, which I'm very, very ready for. Um, not only that, uh, this year we are working on uh, proposing the new land use chapters of our master plan, as well as the natural resource chapter, uh, which will be going to the planning board, I believe this week for their kind of first workshop is quite exciting. Um, but on top of that, Summersworth has officially, or will be officially joining the Community Power Coalition this year, which will hopefully help to lower electrical costs for residents. Um, it's a neat opportunity where we can work with other communities, uh, kind of uh, work together, input our, our, our money together to purchase uh, electricity that is not only uh, less expensive than Eversource, uh, but also potentially more green. Um, so quite exciting uh, in that regard. Uh, last but not least, again, I know another thing that might not seem to fit, but I think is really important, uh, is we've provided over the past uh, year or two significant cost of living adjustments for all of our city and uh, staff and our unions. Uh, we've invested, or will invest just this year alone, a million dollars just into salaries and benefits to ensure that people want to stay here and that their jobs are sustainable and that they are able to afford to continue to live in this area, work for the city, and uh, do the great things that they've done. So unions that we were able to uh, negotiate with and provide uh, cost of living adjustments include the police uh, union, the fire union, water, wastewater union, the highways, as well as our professional associations, and then we gave a all non-union folks a uh, cost of living, living adjustment as well. So these are generous adjustments that will hopefully uh, kind of provide these folks uh, deserved salaries and benefits. All right, and last but not least, I want to talk about human services. This has been a uh, topic of interest, at least uh, over the past uh, number of years. I know in my time as mayor, this has probably been the one thing that has, uh, you know, rightfully taken the most of my own attention. Um, but I'm hoping uh, through uh, better coordination with uh, not only the other mayors uh, in the Tri-Cities region, so Dover and Rochester, but also with uh, Stratford County, the commissioners at Stratford County, and as well as the state, that we can increase coordination and provide uh, increased capacity uh, for folks to, who are homeless or experiencing uh, housing instability uh, through our Will and Warming Center. Um, again, we're in a number of discussions right now, hoping that next year the capacity and the availability for space is increased. Uh, I'm not yet sure what that will look like, but we have some really great ideas in place to be able to provide more for these folks. Um, but again, hopefully more plans coming out within this year. Um, again, I also want to stress that uh, we need to start thinking about homelessness as something that's not just in the winter, but is year round, and thinking about ways that we can provide um, you know, services or even just like check-ins with folks throughout the warmer months so that we know who is homeless, who is experiencing, um, you know, housing instability throughout the warmer, warmer months so that when winter hits, we are better prepared to service and provide resources for these individuals. Um, I also 
uh, through discussions at our most, most recent meeting, which I will update you about at my mayor's report tonight. Um, I'm hoping that throughout the next few months, uh, through the summer months, can bring together stakeholders, uh, so nonprofits, state organizations, and anyone else who is a stakeholder uh, in this uh, topic to then better understand how the three committees, communities can meet the needs of people who are unhoused. Um, but beyond this, uh, we as a group, and me certainly, need to work to advocate for a county-run shelter as our long-term solution. We know that when we first put the warming center um, out as an option, that was temporary. Uh, it was to keep people safe, keep people alive, and I think it has successfully done that. Um, but currently, discussions at the county level are stressed, to say the least, about whether we will be able to have a county-run shelter that can um, adequately provide services year-round to folks who are in desperate need of this. Um, and last but not least on this list, uh, something that I've been thinking a lot about is how we can uh, operate with like a housing-first approach and provide transitional housing so that folks uh, do not need to rely on warming centers or shelters so that we have more of this housing for these individuals to be able to say, hey, you know what, you need treatment or maybe you're just you know, young and haven't yet been able to get on your feet. Maybe you're 18 and you just got kicked out of your house. Let's provide you a, a place where you can stay. Um, maybe you are experiencing domestic violence in your home and you need a safe uh, shelter that you can stay at or safe housing that you can stay at. All of these and more um, are uh, appropriate transitional housing ideas that I think as a community we can get behind so that we are seeing the numbers in these warming centers and shelters decrease so that folks actually have long-term housing solutions. Um, so I've I'm, I'm got a number of plans in the works and will hopefully uh, start to address some of the transitional housing needs. Um, but with that, that's it. I conclude my report. Uh, I conclude my state of the city, at least for the city side. I thank you so, so much uh, for you know, listening and uh, hopefully if you have any questions, you don't hesitate to reach out. I'd love to talk more about all these ideas. Um, but without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to the school side and introduce uh, Chairwoman Maggie Larson. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Girding. How nice to hear everything going on. Um, this will be brief. Funny being on this side and no one sitting up there, so in my back towards everyone. So good evening, Summersworth. It's in my honor to report on the remarkable progress of our school district this year. For many years, we have prioritized educating the whole child through social emotional learning across all grade levels. We know that nurturing both academic excellence and emotional well-being is critical for lifelong success. Our counselors, teachers, and staff have applied uh, evidence-based SEL curricula alongside trauma-informed practices. We have seen positive impacts on school climate and student resilience. Retaining our exceptional educators has also been a key focus. We've been, purpose we've been purposefully cultivating a culture of gratitude through staff appreciation initiatives and competitive compensation packages secured through fair and supportive collective bargaining agreements. Our teachers and staff are the very bedrock of our district. We are committed to showing them the profound respect they deserve. So let me express my deepest gratitude for those professionals who show up every day as educators, mentors, and advocates for our students. Your passion and dedication do not go unnoticed. We see you and we appreciate you. This year also brought about the opening of the school-based health center at Summersworth High School, the only one operating in New Hampshire, uh, providing integrated physical and mental health services. The high school also implemented um, teen mental health first aid curriculum, which teaches all sophomore level students how to identify, understand, and respond to mental health and substance use challenges amongst their friends and peers. Uh, Summers Earth High School was the second school in New Hampshire to provide this important training, supported by the National Council for Mental Well-Being. Also, our entire middle school staff has been trained in youth mental health first aid as of last Friday. While prioritizing the whole child, we have simultaneously strengthened academic rigor and curriculum across all of our schools. This pre-K to 12th grade articulation ensures students build strong foundations and face coherent, cumulative learning progressions. 
we have exceptional CTE programs with over 50% of graduates completing two-year pathways. They exemplify our steadfast commitment to highly relevant real-world skills. And our students continue achieving great successes, a testament of the power of our Summersworth community. Um, our Hilltoppers football team brought home their third consecutive state championship trophy. If you haven't heard, you should have. Uh, our girls um, volleyball team made an inspired run to the st uh, state finals, and uh, we're just so proud of our um, athletic program is focused on supporting young athlete athletics and young athletes and encouraging uh, participation at all levels. Um, at every Hilltopper game, we've witnessed exceptional sportsmanship and unmatched Summer's Earth pride. So please join me in any coming to any sports activity uh, in the future. You're all welcome. Our music program continues to grow and marches forward with beautiful new band uniforms for the first time since 1979. Our theater department has worked tirelessly towards this week's production of Little Shop of Horrors. All are welcome to the Black Box Theater thir this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 7 p.m. for the show. None of this would be possible without the collective commitment of our entire city. Residents, school board members, city officials, local businesses, and community partners, we are working together, united by a vision of success and security for our children. It is this distinct Summersworth pride that allows us to meet every challenge and unlock incredible opportunities. We are diverse, a vibrant and resilient community with exceptional educators and wonderful empathetic students. Thank you Summersworth for the partnership. Together we will continue achieving great things. Go Hilltoppers. Thank you. Mayor, is there anything else? No, I no. just want to thank everyone for being here tonight. Thank you, counselors. Thank you, city staff, and anyone from the public who came to uh, listen to this. Yeah. And again, yeah, go thank Hilltoppers. You. I yeah. like that. Go Hilltoppers. <laughs> Thanks. Thank